Hi guys! Um, the purpose of this video today is to walk you through the rest of our article that we've been re reading together this week. Um, as you can see, I am not here today. I am going to be having a medical procedure done. So I will be out today and I'll also be out tomorrow recovering. And um, even though that I will be out the next couple of days, um, I wanted us to still be able to finish reading through our article about the space travel to the moon. And you are also going to continue to have a test on this um, article that we've been working on this week. So I've put together a video where you can listen to me reading through the rest of the article and you can follow along with me as we fill in the rest of our notes. And if you are listening and paying attention and writing everything down that you need to, then this will just really help you be more prepared for answering questions by yourself um, tomorrow for a grade. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have your reading packet out. Remember, this was the packet one small step that we've been working on all week. And we are actually going to start off on the very last page in your packet. So go ahead and turn to the last page of the packet. And we're going to go back through the last page of our packet and we are going to write in what were the main goals, the big mission goals for Apollo 7's mission, Apollo 10's mission, and then of course Apollo 11's big goal or their mission. So we're going to fill this part in in your packet first and then after we fill that in reviewing those goals for the Apollo missions then we're going to continue reading a little bit more about that special Apollo mission. Are you ready to get started? All right make sure you have your packet ready and your pencil ready and here we go. All right, before we begin reading any more today about the space race to the moon, we are going to go back and review some of the earlier Apollo missions. So the first Apollo mission that we are going to focus on is the purpose of Apollo 7. If you look back at the text on page 55 under the heading Starting Over, Let's skim and scan and see if we can find Apollo 7 in the text. I see Apollo 7 in this first paragraph. I'm going to go back and look a little bit before it to see if I can find out the reason, the purpose, the goal of Apollo 7. And if I go back a little bit, it says, then in the fall of 1967, NASA sent its first manned Apollo mission into space since the tragic fire. So Apollo 7 is the first time astronauts have gone back into space since the fire that killed three astronauts. If I continue reading, it reminds us of the purpose for the mission. This mission would allow astronauts to pilot the completely redesigned command module. So the purpose of Apollo 7 was to give astronauts an opportunity to pilot, an opportunity to practice flying this new redesigned command module. They need opportunities to train. They need opportunities to fly it before we get ready to go to the moon. So make sure you fill this in beside Apollo 7 in your notes. Next, we're going to look and see if we can skim and scan for Apollo 10. So I'm just going to skim through, see if I can find where does it mention Apollo 10. Oh, right here in this second paragraph. 
Once I found Apollo 10, I'm just going to do a little bit of rereading to see if I can find its purpose. Apollo 10 blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center. Its mission was to orbit the moon and scout the lunar surface for possible landing sites. So Apollo 10 was going to practice flying around the moon. And as they flew around the moon, they were going to be looking at the moon's surface and trying to find good places that might be a great spot to land. They don't want to land in a big crater or near any big rocks or boulders. So as they're flying around the moon, they're just going to scout the land and look for a really good landing spot that Apollo 11 crew will use. So after Apollo 10's dress rehearsal, kind of that big practice run in preparation for the real mission, we know that the big goal of Apollo 11 was to actually do it. Send astronauts to the moon and make sure that they arrive back home safely. So make sure you have filled in the mission goals for Apollo 7, Apollo 10, and Apollo 11 in your notes. And then we're going to continue reading to find out a little bit more about the Apollo 11 mission specifically. All right. Let's look at Apollo 11's mission. As we read, we are going to be answering some questions from our reading packet. So I want you to flip back to the very front first page in your reading packet, and I want you to take a second to look at question number 12. What is it asking? The first question we're going to answer in our reading packet for this section is, who were the astronauts aboard Apollo 11? As we read, I want you to be looking to see if you can find that answer. Follow along as I read on page 56 about Apollo 11. Astronauts had been in the Earth's orbit, but could a person survive outer space in a tiny capsule for an entire week? Would they be able to move and work in a gravity-free vacuum? Could they change spacecraft for the return trip at 25,000 miles per hour to Earth? In 1963, scientists and engineers weren't so sure. Maybe President Kennedy was asking the impossible. The astronauts aboard Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin might have been thinking just that. Apollo 10 had successfully orbited the moon. However, no one had ever landed on the moon or blasted off from it. Apollo 11 would be the first to try. Okay, as we read through this part on page 56, did you find the answer to question 12? Who were the astronauts that were flying in Apollo 11? They were Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins and Buzz Aldrin, and you can see them pictured here. Make sure you write down these three astronauts' names, and if you need to pause the video to have enough time to fill it in, you can. Looking at question 13, question 13 says, look at paragraph 1 on page 57, and they want us to think of some words that we can use to describe Neil Armstrong. He is one of the Apollo 11 astronauts. How could we describe him as a person? So let's read this first paragraph on page 57 together. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin 
climbed into the lunar module, which was called Eagle. Michael Collins would stay behind inside the command module and orbit the moon. As the lunar module undocked from the command module and began its descent, Armstrong scanned the moon for their landing site. Armstrong was a veteran of the Gemini missions. He commanded the module when it nearly tumbled out of control. He knew firsthand the risks and dangers involved in spaceflight. So if I had to think of some words I could use to describe Neil Armstrong, I think from this first paragraph, I think he's very skilled and he has a lot of knowledge because he flew in some of the Gemini missions and he's been in dangerous situations while flying in outer space. He has a lot of knowledge about the dangers and the risks. And he also has a lot of skills, which will hopefully allow him to land the lunar module on the moon's surface successfully. Before we um, continue reading, just note that two of the astronauts were in the lunar module and they were the two that were actually going to land on the moon and get out and explore. But one astronaut was going to stay in the command module, continuing to orbit and fly around the moon while this was taking place. So while there were three Apollo 11 astronauts, only two of them were actually working to walk on the moon. Now, let's look at the next question in your packet. Number 14, how is landing on the moon different from landing on Earth? Well, I'm gonna continue reading on page 57. Let's look at that second paragraph. It says, landing on the moon is very different than landing on Earth. On Earth, a plane uses its wings to ride on the air. The moon, however, has no atmosphere. The only way for Armstrong to control the Eagle was to fire its rocket engine. By tilting the engine, Armstrong could control how the lunar module moved up, down, forward, and backward. Although a computer controlled the engine's thrust, Armstrong steered the lunar module as it skimmed over the surface of the moon. He didn't want the eagle crashing into a boulder or landing inside a deep crater. So Neil Armstrong is going to have to steer the lunar module until it finds its landing site. But remember, landing on the moon is not the same as landing on Earth. And the reason that landing on the moon is different is because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. It doesn't have air um, on the moon that would allow it to kind of float down um, onto the surface. He's going to have to use the rocket engines and steer it down. So make sure you have filled in questions 12, 13, and 14 that go along with these two pages. And then we're going to read some more to find out about what happens as he's trying to land on the moon. So as Neil Armstrong is attempting to steer and maneuver the lunar module so that it can land on the moon, um, he encounters some problems. And if we look at our next question in our packet, number 15 asks, how many problems did they face as they were getting closer to landing on the moon? 
So we're going to read through page 58 and 59. And as we read, we're going to see if we can count and keep track of the number of problems that they encountered just trying to land on the moon. Follow along as I read through page 58. Armstrong knew that the lunar module had only enough fuel for one attempt at a moon landing. If anything went awire, they would be forced to abort the mission. Even worse, if they burned too much fuel on the descent, they might land on the moon with no fuel left to blast off again. That doesn't sound like a very good situation. So it seems as if running out of fuel is a problem. Okay, the next paragraph. Suddenly, an alarm went off in the lunar module. The computer was processing too much information. It threatened to shut down. Armstrong and Collins waited anxiously from orders from mission control and finally mission control radioed back and told them to keep going this kind of happens with your chromebook sometimes sometimes if you click and click and click and click and you try clicking too much and the computer is doing too much what happens to your chromebook it kind of freezes up it stops working properly so that sounds like the same kind of problem that they were having as they tried to land on the moon. I think that might be problem number two. We're running out of fuel, and now the computer is processing so much information, it's about to shut down. What else happened? We're in the third paragraph. The computer glitch was not the only problem the Eagle faced. It was also being guided by the computer into a giant crater filled with enormous boulders. Realizing the danger this posed, Armstrong regained control of the lunar module and found a safer landing spot. The module flew lower and lower until Armstrong saw that the engine's thrust was blowing up dust from the lunar surface. They were almost there. All right, they are so close to landing on the moon, but unfortunately, the computer is acting up again and it's steering them into a dangerous landing spot. So Armstrong has to correct this. He has to steer the lunar module to a safer landing spot. That looks like another problem. All right, let's look at the top of page 59. It says, then mission control sent another warning. The astronauts only had 60 seconds of fuel left. Then they only had 30 seconds left. If Armstrong did not land the Eagle now, he would be forced to abort the mission. And when you abort in a mission, that means you just have to quit, give up, and turn around and go back home. They're running out of time. 30 seconds left to land it, or they're going to have to quit and go back home. The middle paragraph says, finally, the eagle landed softly on the lunar surface. And moments later, Armstrong's voice crackled over the radio waves. The eagle has landed. And back on Earth, scientists and engineers and just about everyone working at NASA cheered in celebration. The United States had won the space race after almost a decade of significant successes and tragic failures, NASA had fulfilled President Kennedy's dream of landing on the moon by the end of the decade. They had accomplished not one impossible feat, 
but several. The magnitude of what NASA had achieved is best summed up by Armstrong's famous line as he descended the ladder and stepped onto the moon's surface. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So we can all celebrate the dedication and hard work of NASA and all of these astronauts for over a decade. They did it. And you can see in the picture walking on the moon and you can see their footprints that they left on the moon. But it almost didn't happen. So if we look at number 15, it wants to know how many problems did they face as they were getting closer and closer to landing on the moon? Well, when we were reading through here, I counted three. They're running low on fuel. The computer threatened to shut down from too much information being processed. And the computer had a glitch that was guiding them into a giant crater. So those three problems almost caused the astronauts to not be able to land on the moon. Now, once they landed on the moon and Neil Armstrong came down the ladder to explore the moon and walk along it, what's the first thing that he said? So if you go back and you reread the last paragraph, it tells you his famous line, Neil Armstrong said that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Make sure you have finished filling in the last of your 16 questions on the front page of your reading packet. And then we have one more thing in our reading packet that we're going to fill out that goes along with our article about the moon. Okay, so the very last thing that we're going to talk about after having read this long informational article is we are going to think about the purpose of this article. So once again, this is an informational text. Remember, informational texts are going to be nonfiction. So this is going to tell you real facts give you real information about real events in history and real people. So why would an author decide to write this article? What's the purpose of it? Authors have many different reasons for writing. Sometimes they're trying to convince you of something or persuade you to um, feel a certain way about a topic, and that could be a reason for writing. Oftentimes, if you're reading fiction, the purpose for that fictional story is they just want to entertain you. They want you to laugh. They want you to be amused and enjoy the story. But this wasn't a story, so I don't think they were trying to entertain me. This was information. So the purpose of this article that we've been reading all week, the author wrote one small step to give you, the reader, information. They wanted to give you information about the dedication and teamwork that took place with Project Mercury, Project Gemini, and Project Apollo. They wanted to show how reaching the goal of putting astronauts on the moon, how that was actually only possible after years and years of hard work, years and years of research. So the purpose of this article was to teach you about the dedication and the hard work and the teamwork of these real astronauts on their journey to put a person on the moon. Make sure you have filled this in in your packet and after you fill this in you should have the whole thing complete. So you will be putting your reading packet back inside your classwork folder 
don't lose it because tomorrow when you get ready to take your reading test, you can pull your reading packet back out. You can look back over the vocabulary words. You can look back over the questions, all of the different notes that we took. You can go back and reread that packet. And you can also use the book and reread any of these pages again if you need to, to help you answer your questions by yourself. You will be turning in your test tomorrow and it will be graded. So make sure you don't lose your notes that we completed together in class today. Put them in your classwork folder.